Jeff from Volano Bikes. Always read your owner's manual and bring your bike to your local bike shop to assure proper assembly and safety. Before we unpack the Volano Tuano 2.0, uh, we're actually going to take a look at the outside of the box. The outside of the box has a, a lot of important information on it. Now, of course, one it says important bike requires assembly and tuning. Improper assembly may cause damage to bike or injury to rider. Um, that's important on all bicycles. Um, but what's important for your Volano bicycle is if you have any issues, you certainly want to call uh, the uh, service line, uh, the customer service, and the number is here, 855-438-2453, or email service at Volano Bikes, and they'll help you with any of assembly issues you have with the bicycle. Um, next, what's also very important is uh, there are instructions. Uh, they're inside the box too, but uh, the pedal instructions are super important. Um, bicycle pedals are pretty unique in how they go on the bicycle. Uh, so uh, these instructions out here are also very important. Again, remember if you have any issues, call uh, or email the service and uh, they will walk you through it. Now I'm going to uh, actually open the box and we look in here. We'll see how the bike should be packed. We'll start in the back here. Now this is the seat in here. Seat and seat post. If we look a little further down um, you will notice there is a box, and that box is the parts box. And I'll reach in there and grab that. Again, pull these in that. And next, the only uh, loose item in the box will be uh, the bike itself. Uh, the bike will come out of the box and just uh, one, one piece with uh, some parts zip tied to it. Got the bike straight up out of the box, and there you have it. You have uh, the remainder of the remainder of the bicycle and all the parts that are zip tied to it. When unpacking a bike, it's always easiest to start with the front wheel. Um, if you do that, the crank will stay stationary and you should be able to slide it off sideways. Now I will cut the remaining zip ties. And remove the packaging. And open the parts box, and this is what we will find inside. We have the front wheel skewer, we have a pair of pedals, the reflector set, and the owner's manual. And these should be the contents of your parts box. Now that the bike's unpacked, we will uh, go to the seat post. So using some bike lube, I will uh, just put a, a dab on my finger and just rub it along the top in a part of seat tube. And then I will get my seat and with a five millimeter um, hex wrench, I will tighten my seat into place. I'm going to focus on the handlebars now. Using a 5 millimeter wrench, I'm going to remove the face plate of the stem. And this is a 5 millimeter wrench. And then I will 
bring the handlebar up into place. Uh, we want to make sure that this brake cable for the rear is not coming around the wrong side of the stem here. So we got to make sure it is on uh, the right, uh, on the left side, but it's going to be the right side for that. So that brake cable, make sure it's in place. Pulling the handlebar into place on the stem. And again, you can see the handlebar has a grooved area that is a clamping surface. We'll start to uh, reinstall these bolts. Uh, again, this is a five millimeter wrench. And you should all thread in uh, nice and smooth. I'm not gonna tighten them all away. Let's get them all inserted. Once they're all inserted, I will try to evenly tighten them. I don't want to completely clamp the top or the bottom or left and right. Um, what we want to do is bring these up to torque evenly. And if you're using a, a torque wrench, it should be about six to eight newton meters of torque. Um, once I got them into place, I will also check uh, the gap on the stem plate uh, seeing that it is equal uh, on the top as well as if you could see down here on the bottom again we want a even gap at that point we will continue to tighten this again sometimes I will crisscross I'll go top to bottom but all the time trying to keep that gap as even as possible. Now I'll bring the shifter up to the bar. Uh, the shifters are marked. Uh, again, you see this one says LH, which is low high. This one's going to go on the left hand side of the handlebar. And this just utilizes a Phillips head screwdriver, pull that apart, open the clamp, and we'll come from behind here. And again, you'll spread the clamp wide enough to clamp over the bar. When you compress the clamp again and insert the screw, make sure the brake cable is not underneath there. So you want to make sure the brake cable is again out of the way so you can screw this into place. If you catch or pinch the brake cable, it will hinder the performance of the brake. So, we'll just tighten that one into place and I'll just place, you could place it almost any position you feel most comfortable with it here, but I'll place it uh, about centered from the tape to the uh, to the stem and then I will grab the other one and, and do the same and the shifter that goes on the right hand side you'll notice uh, is numbered from 1 to 7 that represents the 7 uh, speeds on the back of the bike and just a Phillips screwdriver open the clamp Flipped over the bar, compress the clamp, and pull the brake cable out of the way if it's in the way. And just push forward on this. And once again, you can position these how you, how you like. Uh, just try to make them even, however you position them. 
we'll tighten that into place. Now we're going to install um, the front brake cable. So what you'll do is you'll grab the loose cable and we will uh, feed it into the top of the barrel adjuster. We'll just feed that through partially. Uh, what you also want to do is make sure that this quick release lever is in the down position. To do so, you may have to compress the brake a little bit, just squeeze it. So if I squeeze this with one hand, I could flip this down. I'm actually going to hold this nut in place too, because we don't want the nut to flip down. What we're trying to do is position it so the lever is down, and uh, the face of the pinch bolt is showing. Uh, now, with a five millimeter wrench, I'll turn this this way. Um, what we are going to do is loosen the pinch bolt. You see there's a plate behind it. It automatically shows a gap. We want to bring the brake cable behind this plate here. And pull it into position. Uh, and that will mean that the cable is seated uh, in here and uh, pull the cable down and we're going to make uh, adjustments uh, later. You can't really adjust the brake without the tire on the wheel. To install the front wheel, first we'll grab our skewer. Uh, if you notice the skewer is, has several pieces on it, one of course is the lever and then there's this piece that the lever rotates on uh, that's uh, concave and that's convex so they kind of fit nicely together there are two springs uh, and the springs are cone shaped and uh, the narrow part of the cone goes towards the inside we have the wide part, narrow, narrow, wide and last we have the nut um, and the nut just spins off and I will remove one of the springs um, now I'll grab my wheel uh, if we look at the wheel we can see uh, the axle is actually hollow uh, and that allows the uh, skewer to pass through uh, the wheel Another thing we'll look at is uh, the tire tread pattern. If there's some sort of a V, that usually points forward. So we are going to um, take our skewer. We will uh, insert it into the axle. And if we flip it around, we can see where it came out the other side of the axle. I will put one spring here and again that's the narrow side in and start the nut. Uh, again uh, if we look at the tire pattern we notice uh, that slight V so that's going to be facing forward uh, which will make this side of the wheel the left side now we will install it onto the bicycle. Pulling the wheel into the dropouts on the floor and you want to pull it all the way up into place and holding the nut side of the skewer you will spin the lever side and flip it back. You can see that this one flips back too easy so we need to a little more tension on it and now it's starting to have a little more resistance on it um, and we typically always want the lever to face the back part of the bike uh, so again you want some resistance once we have the lever there's a little resistance uh, we could hold the lever in place where we want it and add a little extra resistance on the nut side and it should require about uh, some palm pressure putting your 
hand behind the spokes and just using your palm to close it making sure that the axle is and the wheel is centered and we will push it back again there needs to be a fair amount of resistance in the skewer <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Now that we've installed the front wheel, making sure the pinch bolts have been loosened, uh, we can, uh, one, adjust our headset. You know, if this uh, doesn't feel like it spins smoothly, you may have to loosen this a little bit. Or um, if it just feels a little loose uh, you'll tighten it a little bit just you don't ever really tighten a whole bunch it really just is an adjustment on the headset bearing so uh, you don't want to tighten this uh, a lot because it will destroy the bearing uh, as well as it won't allow this to to turn so if this feels like it's turning smoothly uh, more than likely it's good but we want to make sure the pinch bolts are are loosened uh, in order to adjust that bearing as well at this point we will straighten the handlebar uh, but you know we'll just look down uh, the wheel you know see that the stem is aligned with the front wheel you don't want it over to the side at all you want it to be aligned and uh, once you have it aligned front wheel to stem uh, then you come back and uh, tighten the pinch bolts and these you want good and tight Let me do both sides of course and this is a five millimeter wrench Oops. now that the front wheels on we can make some adjustment to the brake uh, what I like to do is uh, I'll slide my hand through the spokes and compress the brake against the rim uh, as well as I will as I can press it, pull down on the cable. I want to make sure the cable is completely seated. And then with a five millimeter wrench, I will tighten the pinch bolt. Um, then if I go back and squeeze the lever, you can see that this uh, it's still a little loose for a break, but I'll repeat this. Um, as I repeat it, um, I'm not going to necessarily pull the brake all the way to the rim, but pretty close to it. Again, I'll pull it to the rim. I'll pull the slack out of the cable and tighten it. And this is how we make our this first basic adjustment to the brake. Uh, we have some other brake videos. I'll just show you how to adjust your brakes thoroughly. But I can see that it looks good. I just center it. And we got a good working brake as well as at this point you could check to see that the pads are touching the rim, not falling below the rim or touching the tires. And you want to check both uh, both sides, both pads. And then if you have a uh, good cutter you can uh, cut this and put a cable tip on there now I can install the pedals uh, if we look at the pedals uh, they'll always be marked uh, somewhere on the pedal these have uh, two stickers indicating one pedal is for the left side and one pedal is for the right it also indicates on this particular sticker uh, which way you should turn the wrench uh, in order to tighten these pedals um, as well as the pedals will uh, typically be stamped somewhere on the back side um, you can see uh, this one says L and this there's an R in here and some pedals will even um, be grooved on the side here where the wrench goes and that groove indicates it's the left side pedal uh, so these pedals are marked all over the place and for a reason um, uh, 
it is uh, very important that the right side pedal goes onto the right side of the bike and the left side pedal goes onto the left side of the bike uh, in, as well as uh, uh, the thread pattern on the left pedal is a reverse thread uh, so it turns like the sticker indicates uh, counter clockwise to tighten it uh, so what I will do is I will uh, again get some bicycle lube and put a little lube on there spread it around and also utilizing a bicycle pedal wrench this is a 15 millimeter wrench uh, bicycle pedal wrenches are extra long because uh, the pedal needs to be extra tight so you can get a little extra leverage on the pedal and I'm just going to start by uh, um, hand threading this into place uh, it should thread in relatively easy and again this is the right side pedal so it is going to tie in by turning it clockwise and once I got it into place I will grab a pedal wrench or if you have a 15 millimeter wrench that's extra narrow uh, turn in clockwise I will make this extra tight going to the left side of the crank we notice there's a hang tag on here again these are uh, instructions um, for installing the pedals uh, you can remove that just cut it free um, as well as also a uh, a sticker on the crank indicating uh, which direction to turn in order to tighten again this is so important because uh, the pedals are specific uh, to each side and this is the reverse thread pedal so it is going to tighten on counterclockwise Again, I will get it started by hand. Um, if it won't thread in by hand smoothly, that means it's probably not going in on the right angle. Uh, so again, if it threads in by hand smoothly, uh, it's going in appropriately. And this will tighten counterclockwise. And as well this side needs to be extra tight if the pedals aren't extra extra tight um, they can unspin themselves and uh, this is something that you also should check every couple of months make sure your pedals are still super tight and the left side threads on counterclockwise now we'll install the reflectors I'm going to start with the rear the rear reflector is always red uh, much like your car um, the brake lights in the back are red uh, so we will just clamp that on uh, you'll notice it angles upward somewhere if you put it on the other way it would be facing the ground and would it be too useful and then it's just a Phillips screwdriver that will tighten this. Make sure we spin it towards the back and continue to tighten. The front reflector is white and will clamp onto the handlebar. You may have to pull the brake cables out of the way. I'll put this just behind the shifter. And again, the same Phillips head screwdriver will put that into place. Last, if we look at the tire, imposed on the tire, and sometimes a little harder to see, than you think it would be, is the uh, recommended maximum tire pressure. And this particular uh, tire here 
is uh, rated for a maximum of 110 PSI and though they had the 7.7 uh, .7 bars which they may use in Europe uh, so but here we will use uh, the tire pressure of 110 PSI that's maximum tire pressure so uh, again you can go slightly below that but I don't know that I I would do anything less than a hundred PSI with a max of 110 and then we will air up the tires uh, this bike has a Presta valve I just took the cap off uh, but underneath the cap the valve itself also has to be opened up by unspinning the nut that's on it as well before you can air it up uh, they stick so it's good to just give it a shot um, to loosen up the valve using a bicycle four pump I uh, have a pump that has a dual head uh, one size for a standard trader valve the other for a Presta valve and uh, we will uh, Again, now that we have our valve open, we will push this on and add a tire to the recommended pressure. Once we reach that point, we will remove the pump, then tighten the valve nut. And then, whoops, I dropped my cap. And then put the cap back into place.